Come and join me in today's video where I use some products from Be Quiet and turn this computer from this into this. Here are some brand new products from Be Quiet and in this video we're going to be putting together a $5,000 build which compromises of an Intel i9 14th generation, a 4090, a lot of RAM and hard drive space. So stick around as we put this together. Hey everyone, my name's Monty and welcome to Inside Wire. So big thank you to Be Quiet for sending these products out to me and let's jump straight in and have a look what we have right here. So let's go ahead and start by looking at the Shadowbase 800 FX. You have a tempered glass panel just on the side here. So we have a look inside and there's quite a lot of room that you can see just inside here. So this is a MIDI tower case. So we have an accessory pack just here, which actually houses the controller and any accessories you might need for inside here. We have three fans that are just on the front just here. So obviously keep the airflow coming in and we have one exhaust out here on the back. So if you need to add any more additional fans, you have the top and you have some space at the bottom as well. Just on the side here, you have some screws that you're able to pop in your graphics card or whatever you're installing in here, your PCI cards. You have your PSU at the back just here, again with some screws so we can undo those and actually install it. So the good thing about some of these cases is the PSU can be slotted in from the outside and then you just simply just pop a cover straight on top and the power supply goes in. On the top, you actually have a removable cover. So we have a mesh on here, so you can always take this out and clean it while your fans probably are mounted at the top just here. And that is also magnetic as well. So it comes straight off and sticks straight on as you need. If we go ahead and take off the other side, we're greeted with some space at the back. Now we have the controller just here for your RGBs and we have some in here and we have a few slots available as well. And we have a bunch of cables here which connect all the ports that are sat at the front just here. So make sure you connect these into your motherboard and keep it nice and tidy. And right here you have some additional slots to add in if you have some additional fans that you're popping inside this case. So to keep the airflow going and synchronize all your RGB settings. So another product from Be Quiet is their Straight Power 12 PSU. Now this comes in a few different variations from 750, 850, 1000, 1200 and 1500 I believe it is for this model. Now it's ultra quiet. It uses a standard ATX 3.0 and fits into most of your cases. This unit is ATX 3.0 compliant and it also has the 5.0 PCI Express graphics card. So for those newer ones, it does have the correct pin straight on here. So you don't need to buy any additional cables. Power supply is fully modular as you would expect with most power supplies nowadays and it is 80 plus platinum certified so you don't need to worry about the efficiency of this. Next we have the Pure Loop 2 FX and this right here if we have a quick look at the back so we have the doubly decoupled PWM pump which means it runs silently and smoothly and we'll go ahead and put that to the test once we have it set up. We have a 360 millimeter radiator inside. We have 120 millimeter light wings fans, which I'm actually hoping to see if I can swap out with the white ones just to change the color of this a little bit. And also you have the ARGB connector to allow you to synchronize your RGB lights. It also has an easy refill port, so you can go ahead and fill this up with no issues whatsoever. So let's jump straight into the power supply. So we have your instruction manual and we have a bunch of cables that come with, so you can see there are quite a few here and there are a load here as well. So we'll have a look at which cables we're gonna need for this build. It also comes with a European power supply. Now, I'm sure if you order this in the UK, you will get yourself a UK one. However, I have been sent a European one, but these are fairly standard cables and I have a lot of these kicking around anyway. So here is the unit itself and we'll have a look at the modular ports on the back. So you have PCIe, PCIe, PCIe 5.0, your drives, P8s and your motherboard on the side as well. You have your fan just here, which is covered. And then at the front you have your on off switch along with your power cable. So this is a fairly standard power supply. It is supposed to be very quiet, so we'll go and see how loud this actually runs also as well. I'm hoping by the end of this, it will actually run quieter than my MacBook Pro. So the FX Loop 2, let's have a look at what comes inside the box. So you have the radiator, which is just in here. So we attach our fans just on here. And we have the actual CPU mount on here. There is a sticker on here. If you are installing one of these, be sure to remove it. Don't leave your sticker on there, otherwise it might not end very well for you. We have the ARGB controller on here, so you can go ahead and put all your connections for the fans in here. And we have the 320 millimeter fans. Also included inside the box, you do get yourself your coolant liquid. We can go ahead and top up the radiator once it's installed. And then finally, you have all your screws and everything you need, and you have the brackets depending on whether you're using Intel 
or AMD. I don't think these next bits need that introduction, but let me go and run you through the rest of the components that we're gonna be installing in this board. So we have uh, an Asus ROG Strix Z790A, the Wi-Fi version, and um, what this will allow me to do is install this 14th gen i9 processor. So this has just come out a couple of weeks ago. So looking forward to running this and getting some benchmarks on this. The graphics card needs no introduction. This is the 4090 Founders Edition. And then we have 96 gig of RAM and we have two two terabyte drives. Now, before you come for me in the comments saying, why do these have heat sinks? Well, the point is they were actually cheaper on Prime Day to buy them with the heat sinks than without. So I've got them with the heat sink. If you wanna have a look at any of these products, there are links down in the description. So go ahead and check them out. And they are linked to my Amazon affiliate so I do make a small commission if you do use them to purchase. Next, let's go ahead and start putting the motherboard together before we place it inside the unit itself. So the first thing we're gonna start with is putting the motherboard together. And this is always the first thing you wanna do before you put it in the case. Now, I'm not gonna run through all the different areas of the motherboard, but the CPU, the RAM, the PCI Express ports, the M2 slots are just in here. So this is gonna be a very high level overview of putting this together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is install the SSD. So we have the, I've actually switched this over. Uh, I have the WD black just here. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that. This is a gen four NVMe drive. So we'll go ahead and install this. And to put this in, you just slot this in just here. And it is screwless, so you just go ahead and do that. So that's easy and simple, that's the SSD installed. And also there's a sticker on the back, so be sure to take that out. This is all for the heat sink. So there you go, that's come off. Before I install the CPU and RAM on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and install the back plating that we require for the pure loops. So let's go ahead and do that. Now inside the bag, you do get an Intel bag, which actually has all the parts inside it. And it's labeled for what generation series. So you can see this is 17, XX and 18XX. So we're using the 1700 uh, socket on this i9 14th gen. We have the back plate and here are some additional other sockets that you might need. We're gonna go ahead and place this on the back just here now. So before we pop the back plate in, we're gonna go ahead and pop this on here. So you pop the screw in and then there's an O-ring. Once you've gone ahead and installed these brackets, you simply just place this down on here and then we'll flip the motherboard back over. So you can see that's now in there and we have these little screws in here that we can go ahead and screw in. Okay. Okay, they're now in. So once we've gone ahead and installed these we're gonna install the processor now just before we put the top brackets on, otherwise you won't be able to open this up. So let's go ahead and open this right here. And here is the shiny 14th generation Intel processor. That's it right there. So uh, we go ahead and open this up. There is only one way this processor will go in, so be sure to line up the correct edges and it will fit in as it should. So there we go, we go ahead and put that in. We can pop this down and as you push it down, this comes off and then we pop the bracket at the bottom on. So there we go, that's the processor now installed. Now we can install the top brackets for the AIO processor that we're going to be installing. And there we go, that's now installed. This is now ready for the AIO to go on top. Let's go ahead and quickly install the RAM as the last thing before we move on and install this inside the case. Here is the RAM, the Corsair 96 gig. So we're gonna go ahead and use A2 and B2 to get these installed. There we go, so that's the RAM installed. Now with this all in place, we can go ahead and get the board seated inside the case behind me. Okay, so we have the case laid out here now. This is quite a big case, so the camera angle probably might not be the best, but this is what I'm gonna be able to do for you. And to place the motherboard in, so the first thing we're gonna do is actually remove all the stickers. So, there we go, that's all of them off. One more just on the top here. Okay, I'll go ahead and place this in. And you can see that's now sat there. It's not moving around. It's got all the slots in there that we need. So let's go ahead and place the screws. So we have some screws that came with the case. Let's quickly go ahead and put all the screws in. So there's one. 
So that's the motherboard installed. We're gonna go ahead and install the power supply unit and then we're gonna install the graphics card and then we're gonna start doing all the cabling to make sure everything all connects up together and is working. So the next part, we have the radiator uh, we need to install the fans on for the AIO. So this is the Be Quiet one that we're gonna install next. And um, we have the black one. So they do actually come with black fans, but because I'm going with a white case, again, there's no white AIO available. So I'm gonna go ahead and populate this with white fans. So we have the three fans just here on the 360 millimeter and we have the long screws that I'm gonna quickly go ahead and pop in. Be careful where you do install the fans because you do have these cables that are gonna be powering the RGB and the controlling. So make sure you keep these in the right place to hide the cables behind the back of the case. Next, we go ahead and install the fans. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just place this inside and then go ahead and place this down. You wanna put it as close to this side as you can without it going all the way. You don't need to go all the way this side. So you can keep it on this side over here. Just make sure there's enough room from the fan so you don't get any vibrations just there. And then on the back, you can go ahead and simply just connect up all the screws. Then we just need to place this down on here and we just screw this in evenly both sides to make sure that we have an even spread across both of them. We go ahead and pop one cable down here and this other one we can push down the other side as we're gonna push all of our cables down the back to do all of our cable management. This is the one we've been waiting for. So this is the showstopper for this unit. It's the NVIDIA RTX 4090 Founders Edition. So I've picked this one up. So let's go ahead and unbox this quickly. And then if I flip this over and do the big reveal this side, you can see there's the graphics card right there. I have to say this is a massive graphics card. <laughs> Probably the biggest one I've ever seen before. But uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and it has a fairly decent weight to it. So we'll go ahead and install this into the unit over there. There is plenty of room in the Be Quiet case, so you don't need to worry about these sorts of graphics cards fitting in and stuff because there is loads of room for it to go in. Right, so to get the graphics card finally installed, we need to take off three of these brackets and then we have a push click here if we wanna make sure that it's secured in properly. So let's go ahead and try and install this. And there we go, that's installed. So we just need to go ahead and screw these back in. So installing the power supply is really easy. You just need to take these four plates off. Now gone are the days where you have to go inside to mount the power supply, it's quite simple now. We go ahead and take these screws off. And we simply just go ahead and install the power supply on here. Now I do realize this is a black power supply and a white PC case, but be quiet, only do have a black version. So any other companies wanna send me a power supply, you know, feel free to send me a white one. I'll be happy to install it on this machine right here. To get this installed, there we go, the screws are all added on here. We go ahead and pop this in, and we just go ahead and tighten these up. And there we go, that's the power supply unit installed. And just to show you that from another angle, it's installed right there. Now, unfortunately, I can't actually set up where I would normally set up in front of my camera, but this is gonna have to do in terms of explaining because the case is actually quite big to fit in the camera shop. Anyway, enough about that. So what we have here is all the cables that I've pulled. Now I have gone ahead and actually taken some cables out and pushed a couple of cables through. I'm gonna talk you through exactly what I've done here and my process of going about this. So we can see this bunch just here is all the cables that come with the case already. So I'm gonna quickly run through these one by one. So we have a couple of cables here. Now this is for the fans and the ARGB controller. That's this just here. So if I follow the cable back, it plugs in just here. So this is to go into the motherboard. The main ones that you'll probably be interested in is the front panel. That's the panel at the front here. So the, all the connectivity is on there. We have the HD audio. Again, this is at the front of the panel. We have a USB connection and we have a USB-C connection. So these four need to go straight into the motherboard and we'll see where they go in. This white cable here again goes to this RGB hub and this is a SATA connection which is going to get powered from the power supply straight which is in turn going to power all these fans and the RGB on them. Now I've gone ahead and plugged the power supply cables in just because it can be a bit fiddly to get under here but again I'll talk through each of them and what I've done. We have the new connector on the straight 12 power supply which is the 600 watt and this is the pin to go straight into the 4090 so we'll have a look at that. We have this big 
24 block here, which is the motherboard. So you'll see that there's only one place this will go in. This is the biggest slot you can do. And then we have the SATA cables just here. If we have any additional drives, we can go ahead and power those up. We're gonna definitely plug the SATA cable in from the RGB controller so we can make sure everything gets power on here. This bunch of cables just here is the fans that were already connected to the uh, radiator that we've installed, the AIO. This comes straight from the AIO pump. So again, this is the ARGB headers. All the lights are gonna be synchronized from this one hub. So we have no issues there. And the last power supply cable just here is actually again for the motherboard. There's two eight pin connectors in here and I'll show you around the front exactly where those go. I'm gonna go ahead and start filling this in and then I think that's it for the back here. And then we can flip around the front and have a look at the more important stuff. Now you can already start to see how cable management in here would be a nightmare, but I will come back and cable manage all of this to make sure it's all neat and tidy and it's all kept out of the way. I'm gonna keep pushing these to the front as and when we need to connect them because I need to see on the front of the board where they need to exactly go. And then also I'll be pushing these through one by one so we can go ahead and connect this up. I think there is just one more that I've just realized that I haven't connected, which is the SATA cable just here. There's only one way that can go in. So now this has power from a SATA cable unit. So those two eight pin connectors that I told you about earlier, they're just up here. The main two things I'm going to install first from the power supply. One is the graphics card, so this is quite easy and straightforward. And you can hear that click in, that goes straight in. We're not going to cable tidy just yet, but by the time we finish up this video, this will be fully cable tidied. And the last one is the main motherboard connector. Now give yourself a bit of leverage with this because this is quite a thick cable and um, it, you're gonna need a bit of space to get this installed. The connector is just back here and you can see with the top where that's gonna go. So just make sure you bend that into shape. And there you go, that's in. What you wanna do once you've done that, you wanna push the cable back out the way. Just be sure not to bend this too much because you don't want the connector to snap on the motherboard. One very important one is the pump. There's a fan for the pump. Now there's actually a specific port in here which you want to refer to again to the manufacturer's guide but there's an AIO pump in here we're going to go ahead and just slot that one in there these are all the connectors that we saw at the back so let's start with the ones at the bottom because they're quite easy we have the audio so HD audio that goes in the bottom left just down here with this motherboard we have the fan header from the RGB hub. So we're gonna go ahead and pop that just down here. And then we have the front panel. Now the front panel is obviously the power button and all the rest of it that you need on there. So that actually goes just down here and you can see that's gone in there now. And then we've got these three cables at the top just here. Now, really simple and easy. We have the RGB header, which I know is just here. And that one's installed just there. Now I'm trying to keep the cables as neat, as tidy as I can as we're doing this. So you'll notice I'm pushing cables out the back because all the cable management is done towards the back. And then we have the final two USB connectors. So I'm gonna quickly go ahead and install those. The USB-C one is there. And then we have the USB one just here. The cables are generally neat and tidy in here. It's just this one is a bit of a nuisance that's in the way and one of the RGB headers that goes out the back. But other than that, that's all wired up and let's flip it back around and have a look at the back again. That's my very poor attempt of cable management. If I ever have some time on a Sunday afternoon, I'll be sure to come back and tidy this up. But for now, I think this is just suitable while I'm gonna boot this up and test it. So now comes the moment of truth. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and plug in a power cable, pop that in just down here. And I'm gonna plug in a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse just so we can have a bit of control over this. I'm actually gonna use the monitor that's connected to my computer at the moment. So I'm just gonna go into the motherboard's HDMI socket uh, just for now, just to make sure it powers up and then we can move across to this one when we're doing some benchmark testing. So the moment of truth right here. So we're gonna go ahead and power this on just now and we have a bit of a light here, which is always good. And now comes the moment of truth. So let's go ahead and press the power button. And we have some nice orange glow from Be Quiet just here. So I think this is a bit of standard color. And we can see the RGB fans on here are all exactly the same color. They're all synchronized at this point. We have the GeForce RTX powering up just there so we can see the fan wearing. And overall, yeah, I'm quite impressed with this. So. Not bad, I'm quite actually have relieved that it's booted up first time. I haven't had to do any tweaking with this, but let's go ahead and see what the monitor is saying before we say that it's definitely a success. And just to show you this, this is on my desk at the moment. So I've plugged into the monitor up here and you can see that we have a success. We have the i9-14900, 5700 megahertz is the speed of the memory. There's 96 gig of RAM. We have one keyboard, one mouse, three hubs and we have one WD black storage, which is the two terabytes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all these settings and set up 
and then I'll come back and we'll have a look at some benchmark tests. So we have Windows 11 installed on this machine now and we're going to go ahead and run some tests on here. We're going to start with Cinebench and we can see that I've already gone ahead and run some tests on here so we're not waiting the full time but I'm going to go ahead and kick off the multi-core so you can see some temperatures. For a single core you've got 2263 which ranks top of the list. I expect this processor to be at the top anyway because it's the top end of the 14th generation. On the multi-core again we see at the top with 37,089 and we're going to go ahead and have a look at what this translates to in some real world performance. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and kick off the multi-score just so you can see this. You might hear the fans start wearing in the background because obviously it is using the CPU quite heavily and you can see it's putting full load on these CPUs so they're quite high in terms of the 85, 86 degrees. Uh, some are even pushing to 100 and we're using the full 356 watts out of this, so it's using the full power of this. So I'm not gonna let this whole thing run because you've seen the scores already, but that gives you a rough idea in terms of some of the temperatures that this is gonna be pushing to. Next, we move on to the Geekbench scores. So we've gone ahead and run some tests on here. Single core is 3,036 and the multi-core is 20,144. Again, for those that wanna know the Geekbench test results, these are some of the single core performance and the multi-core performance. Feel free to pause where you wish to do so. And we have 301,562 in terms of GPU performance from Geekbench. Now, again, to a lot of you, these numbers might not mean a lot, but for people that want to know, those numbers are there. Next, we take a look at the disk speed test. Now, this is the Western Digital Black 850X. With this, we should be seeing up to 7,300 megabits per second write speed, but I don't think we're quite going to get that. So let's go ahead and run this. So we're around 5,800 megabytes per second read, write, sorry, and 5,600 read. So that's the sort of speed we're getting with this Asus motherboard and the drive itself. I do have multiple SSDs installed on here. So we're getting similar speeds between the two Western Digital drives. And just before we move on to the gameplay, so I'm going to show you some real world experience. So this is Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, the main reason, one of the main reasons I have put this machine together because I want to be doing video editing on here. So we have some of this, which we have a 12 minute clip on here with a couple of layers of audio and video. And I've stuck some transitions in between and put some blur on there as well, just to use some of the features within here so we can see how well this performs in terms of an export. Let's go ahead and hit export. And you can see roughly how long this is going to take. So this is roughly going to take about four minutes for a 12 minute clip in 4K to export. So reasonably quick in terms of speed. And there we go. That's that file fully exported um, and that's at 100%. So I did have a quick issue with Adobe, nothing to do with the machine. So I had to rerun the export again. Um, for those that are long time Adobe users, they might know of this issue. But yeah, there was a quick issue on here, but that's resolved. So we've rerun that. And this wasn't entirely exactly where I wanted to save it, but you can see that's a 7.3 gig file, which is what we saw just down here. So roughly seven and a half gig. And that is the export of the video itself. So it took approximately four minutes for that to export. So a 4K clip with multiple layers, transitions, uh, exporting in 12 minutes, which I think is really quick. So we're gonna have a quick demo in Forza Horizon 5. So we have the ultra wide screen here. And I'm just going to show you the graphics settings on here. Everything is set to either high, extreme, ultra, and everything's turned on. So everything is to the max settings. So we're going to push the 4090 to its max. I do have DLSS technologies turned on and some of these settings are on down here. So let's go ahead and see what frame rate we're getting. So right now we're getting 128 frames per second. The CPU is sat at 60 degrees because I've been playing for about 15, 20 minutes already. And we are at 62 degrees for the CPU as well. So let's go ahead and give a bit of a gameplay. So let's have a quick demo. And we're comfortably getting about 160 frames per second. So this is going through a town at the moment. So 160 frames per second. I think the most I've got out of here is about 170 frames per second.
and you can see with the graphics turned up to the max this actually looks quite good so there we go that's the results of what we've got so far in terms of some benchmark tests quick gameplay and some real world adobe experience so just to give you an idea of what sort of performance we are getting out of this now over the coming days i will put this to the test and run some more tests and see how well it gets on along with also doing some more gameplay testing as well so if you want to see a follow-up video with this with more benchmarks and results to see what i can get out of this let me know down in the comments below what you want to see there is one thing i forgot to mention earlier which is i switched one fan around to go to the cpu fan that is to make sure the motherboard boots up because that is the initial one that needs to be plugged in so do keep that one in mind when you are setting it up if you want to know anything further about the build do let me know drop me a comment down below and i will see what i can do in terms of getting back to you as quick as i can for now this is inside wire and i'll see you in the next one